Stu, I've known you for a while, but I actually did some research on you here. It says you were born in February 1957. I always thought it was 1857. I have nothing to say about that, Brody. You know how that had to start, right? That, ha that had to start like this. I have this. nothing to say about that, Brody. Uh, your mom and dad, though, were blue-collar people, hard workers. As you were growing up, what was your childhood like? Um, you know, I thought my childhood was pretty cool, actually. Um, there were a bunch of kids always around, whether it was my siblings, my sisters and brothers, six sisters, my brother, or my cousins. Um, and there were plenty of us. You know, we had a lot of family that had come west from Louisiana. And so I had the Greens family, uh, which they lived on uh, 55th and Civil Seminary. And we spent a lot of time with them. Um, my nephew, Marlon, my niece, Madeline, um, were my oldest sister's children. And so um, they were always around. And then, you know, my sisters, Brenda, Carolyn, Marilyn, Jackie, Stephanie, they were always running my brother. I mean, we spent a lot of time together. We did a lot of things together. Um, you know, I enjoyed my childhood, actually. Um, uh, I thought it was very normal. Do you remember attending your first A's game or, or the first couple times you ever went to the Coliseum? My first A's game was uh, with, my, uh, with my cousins, uh, Kevin and Daryl. Wow. Uh, and, that was the first time that uh, we snuck into the stadium. Uh, we, literally snuck in? We literally snuck in, parked our bikes at the Union 76 station on 66th <laughs> in San Leandro, and uh, we walked down the railroad tracks and hopped the fence, and then hopped another fence, and we were inside the stadium. And we camped out in right field, is what we did. Um, and we were there in time for bat practice, collecting baseballs, and. That was our, our, my first game. Now, I can't remember what team it was, but I do remember that. You played for the Dodgers, for the Rangers, and the Phillies. What were noteworthy about your stops with those teams? Because again, you made it to the show, but even in those years, it wasn't the success like Oakland or even in no. Toronto. Well, I mean, the best things about um, all of those places was not what took place on the field for me. Um, it was the people that I uh, was able to meet okay. and the friendships that I still have, actually. Um, with Texas, uh, Buddy Bell was my teammate, and he's still a close friend now. Mickey Rivers was a teammate and still a close friend now. Toby Hara, um, those guys are guys, and, and Big Jim Bibby, um, who I learned some valuable lessons of, about work ethic um, and pitching. Um, you know, I was a, a kid when I was with the Dodgers. I soaked up all the information I could get from from the veteran players. Uh, with the Dodgers, it was Reggie Smith, Davey Lopes, Bird Hooten, um, Don Sutton, and then the veteran guys that were around the baseball team, Don Newcomb, Roy Campanella, Sandy Koufax. That's some legends right there. Yeah, and those guys were all instrumental and helpful to me in maturing and getting through the minor leagues with the Dodgers. And then when I got to Texas, those guys were, were a part of my maturity. Um, when I got to Philadelphia, I had an opportunity to play with Steve Carlton and Mike Schmidt. Those two guys were guys that I dreamed about, knew about, saw them play. I'm catching them on the, the, the tail end of their careers, but I learned from them. Yeah. And, um, and then finally, when I was released, released from the Phillies, um, I signed here. Uh, but more than the playing, playing portion of my career in those two cities, it was more soaking up information and learning um, from guys who had been through it, who had gone through the battles, to listen to them talk about the do's and the don'ts, the things that I should do. They were more, it was more like being in a classroom than it was actually being on a baseball field. So I don't know who or where or when you picked this up, but the stare and the whole intimidation thing. Then we have to reflect back to Sandy Koufax. That's again. where it came from? Yes. Uh, Sandy um, got together with me um, in Instructional League with the Dodgers. Now, I went to Instructional League with the Dodgers in 75 after the season, which I had no idea why they were bringing me, but I did go in 75 after that season. And then in 76, after the 76 season, <laughs> Once again, um, I went to Instructional League, and so I was wild, and Sandy Koufax identified how he was when he first signed with the Dodgers and how he was wild. And so 
I was so wild that I didn't pitch in instructional leagues. I did everything out of the bullpen. All my work was bullpen work. So when the pitcher pitched in the game, I would pitch in the bullpen with the catcher. All right. And so Sandy um, at one point came to me and he said, hey, what I'd like for you to do is lower your cap as low as you can, and that will help you to lower your sights. So lower it as low as you can. And so as I kept lowering my cap, he kept asking me, what do you see? And I said, at this point, all I can see is below the catcher's neck and below. He says, okay, I'd like for you to start throwing with your cap like that. And that's how it happened. You know, it's crazy in 2022, uh, like a pitching coach would tell a pitcher, hey, arm slot, spin rate, all this different stuff. But back in the day, Sandy Koufax said, hey, kid, tilt your hat down. Farmer. Yeah, lower your cap. And that's going to help you to lower. That's going to help you to get your sights a little bit more around the plate. And it worked.